There's something that amazes me about the times in which we live. And that which amazes me is how technically inept people persist in being in this day and age. We live in this time where 99% of people walking around with what would be considered in the 1990s and even the early 2000s, well not the early 2000s, but in the 1990s, a supercomputer in their pockets. We all have these incredible little monitoring devices which we bow down to as we perambulate around doing our daily business and I'm referring to smartphones obviously we all have these smartphones and so many people have computers and so many people have been using computers for years yet I look at these people and nobody knows how any of it works How can somebody muddle through life with something omnipresent and never dig into it to figure out how it works, the history behind it? I work in an IT department in which someone ranked above me the other day a coworker of mine had to explain to them what a GUI is, what a GUI is, and this is an IT professional who didn't know what GUI meant, a common term, obviously. These people aren't users of technology, they're used by technology. People, for instance, who get a YouTube subscription, when you could use something like YouTube Advanced, or, or NVIDIAS, or YouTube, or YT-DLP, or a smart tube on a smart TV. All of those pieces of software that eliminate ads and make the YouTube viewing experience comparable to what it was 10 years ago without when the ads were less malignant. And how are there these people who are older than me and they learned computers in the days before windowed operating systems were the norm. And yet they seem to have forgotten everything when it comes to using a command prompt. And then they used to use it in their professional lives, yet they've forgotten all of it. Computer scientists. I've seen horrible, horrible atrocities of code in my professional life from people graduating with advanced degrees in computer science. People writing something that could be done in two lines of code in about 20 and making it about as labyrinthine as possible to boot. How is it that there are people who still do not know how to use a search engine? What we have at our fingertips is a Memex. We have a Memex now, and if you don't know what that is, look it up. Essentially, it's an augment to our memories. At this point, if you're not using a computer to turn yourself into an augmented human, you're doing something wrong. 
it's all here at your fingertips. You can get a shit laptop. A crappy laptop off eBay, 10 years old. Install Linux on it. Install Haiku on it. Install a BSD on it. Not Windows, please. And start learning. Learning how to become I guess a cyborg. <laughs> but it's seriously, it's all available to you now, these tools, the internet. Wikipedia, for all of its criticisms, is quite amazing. You can learn so much from it. And I think maybe I'm starting to get an inkling of an answer to my own question as to why there are so many people who are completely ignorant about computers and their use despite us living in an age in which computers and von Neumann machines are ubiquitous and that is a lack of curiosity there are too many people who let alone caring about the how they'd never even thought about looking into whys Wise. Why is it called a desktop? Why does the save symbol look like that weird square with one corner being cut to be a 45 degree line? All sorts of whys. Why is it called a mouse? And if you look that one up, you'll find that even the inventor of the thing forgot the exact conditions under which that name was proposed. Why? If you want to see something very amazing, look up a video on YouTube called The Mother of All Demos. It features the man who invented the computer mouse using a system called the online system, which is an operating system that he and a team of others coded in the 60s, which was hyperlinked, which was modifiable on the fly, which featured teleconferencing features reminiscent of those which were only popularized in the last two years due to COVID. And this was in 1968. Human augmentation. He worked for an institute whose purpose was human augmentation. It was from this institute that ARPANET emerged, which, if you know, is the predecessor to the internet. The impetus behind so many of the innovations that led to the desktop PC was to seek out human augmentation. The computer should not be a barrier or a burden to you. It should be your slave. It should be a tool you use to expand yourself. Not for productivity, but for joy and out of curiosity to explore this existence and make the best of it. I love computers because they empower me. But I see so many who become enslaved to malicious systems created by capitalistic know-nothings. You know, there was this, what was it, the Apple, the Apple II was plagiarized basically from a system from the 70s, oh, what was it called? 
It was created by Xerox, the Alto, the Alto computer. Look up the Alto computer, you'll see something truly astounding. Steve Jobs. And Steve Wozniak. Neither of them really brilliant programmers, but one of them at least, a very keen businessman, very savvy, whereas the executives of Xerox in the late 70s were apparently complete dumbasses with no foresight. Anyway, Apple itself is grounded on plagiarism. Plagiarism of the ideas of the people, the men who are forgotten. Windows. A plagiarism of a plagiarism in many ways. The disk operating system. It's not so much an exceptional operating system, even at the time, but its success, again, mostly due to the business acumen of Bill Gates, who could not be called a brilliant programmer by any means. Although better than most. Definitely intelligent man. I just farted. <laughs>